Hello and welcome back to video two of my e-bike build, BMX fat bike build. Since the first video, there's been a few things I've received in the mail and I've mounted them on a bike. Just to give you a quick run through, I have just standard BMX uh, handlebars, nothing special. They were like 20 bucks, I can't even remember the name. Black Ops Neck, also black, black and chrome, black detail. I have my rim, I don't know if that was on the first video. Uh, 20 inch by four inch fat tire. I have the tire mounted with the tube in there. Also, I installed the crank. This is a <clears throat> afterburner BMX 32 tooth sprocket crank. Like I said, Euro bracket, make sure you know the, the, uh, the type of bracket you have before you order, very important. This is a 100 millimeter wide shell. Went on perfect, perfect fit. And I'm doing a black, silver, and uh, red chrome theme on this bike. So this is where it starts. My pedals are red. They have the metalish red look with the chrome. Copper detail, very nice. I have a red chain, also got. It's not mounted because I don't have the back tire. Um, besides that, I also have the laid-back style seat post, which is also black ops. The seat sets back about six inches maybe a little less maybe four inches i don't know the exact number but it gives you that crotch style if you're riding your bike bulletproof seat um it's leather seat uh soft leather uh with uh, padding underneath it's supposed to be comfortable i won't be able to tell you until i ride it but uh good reviews um i have the seat post battery mount so basically that means that it Latches onto your uh, seat post and then it lays behind your back tire. I like it because it's nice and slim and sleek. I'm not a big fan of those rear seat posts where you have bars going from the post to, uh, you know, your uh, your frame over here. I'm not a big fan of that. I just don't like a lot of bars if you don't need them. I'm going for the cleanest possible build I could. So it's very clean, very slim. I like it. Um, it's meant for one of those 250 watt batteries with like those slide on little slim batteries that you see on all those bikes that people use in the city to commute. Uh, this bike is much more powerful than that. So I have a much bigger battery. So the way this is set up, I couldn't put my battery on as is. So I'm limited when it comes to mounting my battery on this bike, you know. When, you, when you're building a mountain bike that has a lot of power, two, three plus thousand watts, you know, a lot of times they do the triangle battery. They put it in the center of their, their triangle, their frame. This is a BMX frame. It's very small. So, I mean, here's my hand. You can see I can't even open my hand full. I have very limited access in the triangle of my battery, uh, the, the triangle of my frame. So I can't mount a battery like they do on, on uh, mountain bikes, you know, uh, with high power. So, long story short, you know, my biggest, biggest obstacle with this bike is I want to try to make it look as clean as possible, and I was trying to figure out where I can mount a battery that would be acceptable for what I'm looking to do. So, I came up with this idea. I got this back mount, this seat mount, for the uh, battery, and what I did was I built this tray. Now, this tray was after hours worth of sitting there brainstorming and trying to figure out what to do with the battery. And I came up with this idea. This tray is basically, well, before I get into that, let me just tell you, this is the face of my battery in exact dimension. Five and a half inches tall by seven and a half inches wide and 10 and a half inches deep, which you don't see here. But imagine this 10 and a half inches uh, uh, deep. So, if I put this on the frame like this, and I just imagine this is a battery, it will look very bulky, very awkward. It just looks oversized and it looks stupid. So, I came up with this idea. This is a battery tray, and this is the focus of this video. I built this tray out of acrylic, and what it's meant to do is hold my battery like so, and imagine this goes back 10 inches. Now, this is 13 inches long, this tray, so that leaves me three inches worth of play in the back for my wiring and everything like that. And what I'm gonna do is, with this tray on the back of the bike, like this, okay? The battery is gonna sit in there, okay? And all my wiring, since it's a rear hub motor, my wiring is all gonna come up through here. I'm gonna drill a nice, maybe two inch 
uh, uh, so, uh, hole saw hole here, put a grommet around it, put all my wiring through here, and I'm going to have my battery and my speed controller inside here. Now, my battery, these walls are four inches tall, mind you, just so you know, and that's on purpose. Like I said, the battery is five and a half inches tall, so actually it may be a little more than that. I could have my dimensions wrong. Regardless, the battery is taller than, than the tray. So that's on purpose. What I plan on doing is I purchased uh, a marine grade canvas that's waterproof. And I'm going to cut it out to the shape of this tray. Okay, it's going to be digital camo color, digital camo print. It's going to look very nice. And basically, I'm going to use it almost like a, an army truck di uh, canvas cover. It's going to come over the top of this here. It's going to cover the battery. It's going to cover the speed control. It's going to be waterproof. There's going to be buttons here. Four buttons on the left and right side. Two buttons in the front, two buttons in the back. So you got 12 buttons total that's going to hold this canvas. I'm actually sending the canvas to an embroidery guy who is going to um, he's going to uh, bind. Binding is when they put like uh, the stitching along the perimeter of the canvas. He's going to bind and button the canvas. So it'll clip, it'll button right on here. It's going to cover the whole battery, keep everything uh, weather, weather tight, weatherproof. And uh, that's where the battery is going to be. So I'm going to take a step back here. You can take a look. You can see right now everything is clear. This is not going to stay clear. I am um, just giving you an example. The next video, you're going to see a finished product. But um, <clears throat> I just want to give you guys an idea of what I've done. What I did was, uh, you can see, right now, because there's no tire on, it looks wide, it looks bulky, it looks kind of out of place a little bit. But I'll tell you what, what you don't realize, because the video does it no justice, is since there's no back tire on here, the back tire with the with the actual rubber on it, it's a 20 inch rim, it's 26 inches in diameter. So I measured this out. This is 26 and a half inches from the uh, frame to the bottom of the, the battery tray. So the tire is gonna come up, it's gonna come just underneath the tray. It's gonna come around and it's gonna just be a little bit longer than, than, uh, than this uh, acrylic tray here. So basically, I think, I hope, that once this tire is mounted, this is going to look like nothing more than a fender on the back of this bike, which is exactly what I'm looking for. It's going to keep everything concealed, everything nice and clean. And uh, meanwhile, I have a nice size battery, and I could even go bigger if I wanted to, but I'm going to stick with this for now. But uh, it's going to be a nice clean build. You're going to have no wiring over here, nothing that looks like... Uh, those monstrosities of bikes you see on YouTube all the time of, you know, these kids, they'll take a, you know, a 96 volt battery, uh, 40 amp hours, you know, you'll have wires hanging all over the bike with splices and everything like that. You'll have a piece of cardboard covering the motor and everything. I mentioned that in my first video. The most important thing for me is I want this to be a clean build. So I'm hoping and I'm, I'm planning on when all is said and done, that all the wiring and everything like that is going to be hidden inside the tray. And uh, you won't see any of that. The only wires that should be coming off of this frame is the LCD screen, you know, this, from the speed controller, which will be mounted in the center here, the brake line, and the throttle. And I have stainless steel uh, wire mesh cover, which it's uh, 5 eighths thick. I'm planning on hiding all those wires in a stainless steel mesh which I can run up to the neck and then it branches off into uh, my control panel here which it should look really good I'm hoping I have this vision in my head <clears throat> but uh, that's my vision and we'll see in my next video if it works out to be so now as far as this uh, this tray goes uh, just to give you a little insight on how this went okay um, I cut everything out using a Dremel this is 0.096 acrylic. I got it at Home Depot. It's uh, like $15 a sheet, which is 12 by 24. Uh, I overbought. I ended up using only three sheets. I bought five. Um, but I just wanted to have more to be safe than sorry. So I used a Dremel with the uh, the uh, the cutting tool on it. It's like uh, basically like a little, little thin disc. And I used a Sharpie, and I measured out my angles and everything like that. And then I used the cutting tool, and I just slightly, I just lightly grazed along the Sharpie line, about two, three passes, and then it just snaps. 
So once you have your squad line, you just snap it and um, you have your shape. And then I use also the Dremel, I use the sanding tool and I sanded the sides of it to make all the edges nice and clean. I don't know if you can see this on this camera, but nice and clean and smooth. And I can't, I tell you what, I, I, I was, I was very, very satisfied and, um, <clears throat> with the results rather and i'll tell you what i overachieved i didn't think it was going to come out as nice as it did as far as the panels go so after that what i did was i used gorilla tape and i just used the gorilla tape to hold the panels in place you know i i laid them one by one where they're supposed to go taped them gorilla tape is phenomenal once that was done and it had its shape 100 percent black silicone cleaned the acrylic with um uh uh, rubbing alcohol you know i siliconed it and i'll tell you what this thing is totally stable but this is not the finished product this is the initial shape of, of you know the uh, tray it's uh siliconed in place the next step is i got vinyl wrapping it's um carbon fiber vinyl wrapping very cheap it's like nine dollars on uh ebay and I'm going to put that carbon fiber wrapping over the acrylic on the outside on all four sides. And then once that's on, I have stainless steel L bracket, you know, like it's shaped like the L. I don't know if you guys are familiar with construction. For those of you that are not, it's um, <clears throat> basically like thin bracketing that goes in corners. And I'm going to do the whole perimeter exactly where this Gorilla Tape is with the stainless steel bracket with stainless steel red screws the same color as these pedals here and i'm going to put the screws in all the holes where the bracket is mounted so basically you're going to have carbon fiber stainless steel trim with um with red chrome screws going in it which should accent this bike beautiful so that's my that's my vision and my brain and um i hope it works out to be so so uh i got everything coming within the next few days this is where I'm at now. I hope you liked the video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to, to post them. I'm up for suggestions. Like I said in the first video, this is a first-time do-it-yourself e-bike build. I don't really know much about e-bikes besides the videos and, and um, the blogs that I've been on. So anybody has any knowledge, you want to give me some uh, advice, constructive criticism, I am always a fan of. I'm willing to listen to people. Thank you for watching my video and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.